the kings and priests realized that his knowledge of natural laws filtered down to the merchant classes and the uneducated, the worship of the sun would end, and so would their powers over the people. The solution was to transfer the attributes of the sun gods to mythical human figures. These figures were understood to be mythical, and their tails matched the sun's monthly and yearly progress through the sky. Many such solar heroes and savior gods preceded Jesus. Their stories are exactly the same as the New Testament story or have many of the same elements. They were born on December 25th. Their mother was a virgin. They were crucified or nailed to a tree and then buried for three days, after which they were resurrected. For just one example, let's compare the Jesus story to the Horus myth from Egypt. Jesus, born on December 25th. Horus was born on December 25th. The mother of Jesus was Mary. The mother of Horus was Isis Mary. Jesus begins as the Lamb of God in the age of Aries. Until about the 8th century AD, crucifixes bore the figure of a lamb, not a man. <laughs> lamb imagery gave way to fish imagery to denote the incoming age of Pisces. Ancient astronomer priests noted that the sun descends southward until after midnight on December 21st, when it stops moving south for three days and then starts moving north. During this period, the sun dies, and it is hung or crucified in the sky. This three-day period is called the winter solstice. At the end of the winter solstice, on December 25th, when the sun begins moving north, the sun is resurrected or reborn as the new sun for the coming year. Ancient peoples in colder climates rejoiced and created celebrations for December 25th, the day the sun turns north, because it meant that spring was coming. The sun is born of a virgin. Ancient astronomers noted that at some winter solstices, the constellation of Virgo, or the Virgin, rose with the sun, having the sun at her bosom. This was the origin of the virgin birth myth, later applied to savior gods, including Jesus. During the daytime, the sun is highest at 12 noon. Jesus began his father's work at the age of 12. The sun enters each constellation at 30 degrees. Jesus is baptized at the age of 30. The sun's disciples are the 12 constellations. Jesus had 12 apostles. The sun changes water into wine by both creating rain and ripening the grape. 
the sun walks on water. The sun wears a halo. It is very easy to demonstrate that the story of Jesus in the New Testament is meant to be yet another astrological tale of the sun's passage through the year. Jesus is born between a horse and a goat, the symbols of Sagittarius and Capricorn. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, the water bearer, also the symbol of Aquarius. The first disciples were fishermen corresponding with the symbol of Pisces. Jesus is called the Good Shepherd, corresponding to the Lamb or Ram of Aries. The sign of Aries was named for the spring months when the lambs were born. The Taurus sign was named for the months of April and May when bulls were used to till the fields. Jesus tells the parables of sowing and tilling the fields. Jesus speaks of duality, symbolized by the sign of Gemini. Next, Jesus speaks of backsliders, which corresponds to the sign of cancer. Jesus is then called the lion, which corresponds to the sign of Leo. In Egypt, the sign of Leo was named for the hot months when the lions came in from the desert. Jesus is called the true vine, corresponding to the grape harvest that occurred during the months of Virgo and Libra. Jesus is betrayed by Judas, the backbiting scorpion, or the sign of Scorpio in the fall months, during which the sun's strength begins to weaken. On the cross, Jesus is physically wounded in the side by the centurion spear. The earlier astronomical version was the arrow of Sagittarius, the centaur, piercing the dying sun in December. Jesus is crucified and dies between two thieves or between the winter signs of Sagittarius and Capricorn. This corresponds to the sun dying at the winter solstice. Like the new sun that emerges from the solstice, Jesus is resurrected three days later. Such passion plays were performed in all of the older savior god religions. Julius Caesar, in the century before Jesus, was declared to have been born of a virgin by a vote of the Roman Senate in order to make him a god able to compete with other pagan gods. It is easy to prove that the earliest Christians knew the Jesus tale was fictional, that Jesus was a metaphor for the sun, and that the basis for the story was astrology. Saint Athanasius, bishop of Alexandria, wrote, should we understand sacred writ according to the letter, we should fall into the most enormous blasphemies. Early converts to Christianity were forced to recite a curse that Jesus was not the Son. Therapeutes are noted by, among others, the Jewish historian Philo. Philo said they worshiped the sun. Possibly a therapeutant himself, Philo wrote of the trial and crucifixion of a suffering servant, but he does not mention Christ or Christianity in connection with these events. Instead, Philo's work was later adapted for the initial creation of the mythical Christ figure. The therapeutes were an ancient network of religious brotherhoods. They eventually became known as the Gnostics. The 4th century AD Christian historian Eusebius admitted that the therapeutes were the same as the Gnostics. Eusebius also drew a clear distinction between the therapeutes and the Jewish Essenes. 